After a longer wait than usual, Update 35 is finally here, or should I say Season 1 Rival Incursion. With it comes a lot of changes for players new and old, along with some many new goodies to play with. For me, who is obsessed over DRG's design, details, and funny dwarves for a while now, this update has my brain going crazy mode. I can make my driller look like this now, and if that isn't life changing, I don't know what is. The main feature promoted and teased for Rival Incursion was four new primary weapons, and they're all here as promised, looking fancy and new as ever. New primaries seem pretty intense to make. Obviously, it has to feel good to use. There's also upgrades, overclocks, and all the previous frameworks to make with it. That's a lot of stuff, but everything is here, and I'm impressed the frameworks are especially. I can't imagine making that many weapon models. To obtain these four new firearms in-game, you will have to reach level 20 on each respective class and then do an assignment. Afterwards, you can purchase it in the equipment terminal. All right, that's enough for the intro. Let's start talking about these. The DRAC-25 Plasma Carbine is Scout's new primary. This rapidly fires purplish projectiles that appear similar to Driller's EPC. And when I say rapid, I mean a nightmarish amount of plasma. From the company's brief description, we learn that the plasma carbines are very cheap to manufacture. They also make sure to specify that it hardly ever blows up, which creates just the right amount of distrust that we all need in our lives. Some things never change at DRG. The Plasma Carbine was the first of the four I tried out, and holding something new in-game is such an odd feeling. The last time new weapons were introduced was Update 19, and that was nearly three years ago. That's a fact I wish I didn't know. Like I mentioned earlier, the projectiles by default travel very fast, but they can be upgraded even further in the equipment terminal, and I give two big thumbs up on that decision. Slow projectiles can be difficult to aim, and it's kind of frustrating. That being said, the Drac-25 is definitely not as accurate as either the GK2 or the M1000. It makes up for that by not requiring a reload. This is Scout's first weapon to use the overheat mechanic. It may seem small, but it's really nice to not have to reload so often on the blue boy. Weapon feel is pretty solid here. There's nothing like the noises of a bug being slapped by a dozen plasma balls in a matter of seconds. Overall, I'd give it a solid good rating. It's not particularly crazy to use, but it's definitely nowhere near bad. And if we're counting smaller details, I really like how it looks. It's very high tech and angular. It's got that sci-fi look. It's really good. That all being said, there are parts I wish were better here. Similar to Scout's other primaries, I find the upgrades and overclocks underwhelming. Thermal feedback loop is just okay, and manual heat dump sounds like another day in the Applebee's bathroom. Other than those two, it's pretty standard upgrades you've seen before. Electric damage, increased ammo, armor breaking, you know the deal. There are a couple interesting overclocks, but again, just not a fan of the lineup here. Shield Battery Booster is an unstable that increases damage and projectile velocity when the player is at maximum shield. But this comes with a trade-off of more heat generated per shot, and on overheat, it will deplete the player's shield completely. It's kind of like a risk-reward deal. The increased heat generated per shot is so significant, I just really didn't enjoy using this. Rewiring mod is a cool idea, taking the overheat mechanic and making it beneficial to the player. When the rifle overheats, some ammo will regenerate during that time. Manual Heat Dump would be a pretty good pair with this. Even then, I think the ammo capacity cut and overheat duration increase are just too hefty for this to be worthwhile. Last but not least is impact deflection, which makes the projectiles bouncy. I had no reason to bring this up other than I think it's funny. It's not predictable or practical, but you know, sometimes it's fun to just torture your teammates and fill a cave with some bouncy plasma. I'm sorry to anyone dealing with this in multiplayer. Uh, best of luck to those brave souls. Overall, the plasma carbine is a decent gun, but definitely my least favorite of the four. It feels right, and it's very impactful and satisfying, but compared to the other weapons, it's the least exciting. Pair that with some underwhelming overclocks, and I'm just not feeling this one as much. I don't hate it by any means, and I'll still pick it up every so often, but the M1000 still has me hooked. I give the Drac-25 Plasma Carbine a 3 out of 5 Funny Dwarf. When the Lock 1 Smart Rifle was revealed, I was intrigued, but it's really hard to get that shotgun out of my hands. The Warthog is one of my favorite weapons in a game, and that leaves Stubby very lonely in my equipment terminal. I'm sorry, little buddy. I was worried the Lock 1 would have the same fate, but after running this new camera-enhanced auto rifle for a few missions, I think I'll end up switching my engineer up. The AI core attached to the weapon can detect, aim, and hit enemies in its limited range of sight. If the user needs to, they can take control of the weapon by tap-firing themselves. While in use, the weapon feels like a blend of the auto pistol and Titanfall and playing the game Res Infinite, which is like an on-rails third-person shooter. 
On the topic of feel, the Lock 1 has an aura of cool. A hacky prototype auto rifle scrapped together is such a good vibe, even down to how it feels to select targets, arc projectiles to hit weak points, and watching a burst of bullets accurately fly into each target in quick succession. Using it just makes me feel smart, and if that isn't impressive, I don't know what is. Dealing with swarmers and shockers has never felt easier as NG. Taking out five or more at a time is comparable to ascending into heaven and finding out they have Wendy's french fries there. Opening up the equipment terminal and seeing the unique upgrades for this thing just makes me giddy. I feel like a kid on Christmas morning. Macro lens, shutter speed sensor, aperture extension, and of course smart targeting software. You tell me I get to sit here and tweak my fun little camera guy. I can even pick him up off the gun and look at him. He's such a good guy. And it doesn't even stop there, even the overclocks are all really cool. Executioner significantly increases damage output when all targets are locked, rewarding the player for doing so. This is made easier with an increased locking speed. Seeker rounds is pretty crazy, ignoring armor on enemies completely in exchange for a slower rate of fire and longer reload times. This even works on oppressors. Explosive chemical rounds is kinda like the smart rifle version of explosive rounds. When locking three or more shots into one target, the last shot will explode on impact. I like this one a lot. It's not always perfect for every fight, but it was really useful against swarms of grunts. Overall, I'm a huge fan of the Lock 1 Smart Rifle. It fits well in the engineer's loadout, feels great to use, can be heavily customized, and it looks cool as hell too. This took me by surprise, and now my NG can finally use more than a shotgun. I give the Lock 1 Smart Rifle a 5 out of 5. When prototypes were shown off earlier this year, the Hurricane Guided Rocket System was my most anticipated. It's like the rocket launcher from Half-Life, but now you can shoot multiple rockets at a time. This concept had me foaming at the mouth. In my TF2 days, I was a soldier main, so you know firstly that I cannot aim in video games, but also that I was absolutely stoked to use this thing. Out of the four, this was the toughest for me to get the hang of. Guiding rockets through caves is a lot harder than I anticipated. In smaller areas, it's more of a slightly altering trajectory kind of deal, and in larger caves, depth perception got the best of me pretty often. But after some getting used to, I had a blast with the hurricane. Pun intended. Guiding rockets has a similar feel to the smart rifle, but it's not as techy and hacky. It's more like you're that blue guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, but instead of an arrow, you have like 200 rockets. Both single target and crowd damage is pretty significant, making it feel like a nice in-between of Gunner's previous primaries. I do wish it was a little more forgiving with flying targets. If you put your crosshair on something that's flying, uh, it can change directions even if you move slightly off of it, and that's kind of frustrating when you're trying to hit a Mactera from far away, for example. Upgrade-wise, things are pretty standard, with the highlight being nitroglycerin compound, giving an increase to damage the longer rockets have been in the air. Just like the Lock 1, the overclocks are all pretty neat, but I'm just going to point out a few of them. Jet Fuel Homebrew is a good option for anyone not wanting to guide missiles around very much and they just want to shoot a ton of rockets really fast at some bugs. Well, it's not my preferred playstyle as I love the guided missiles, it's still good that it's available. Salvo module changes how the weapon fires significantly, allowing users to store up to 9 rockets and shoot them all at once. The downside being the rockets can no longer be guided at all. It kind of reminds me of another rocket sneeze gun in a game. Manual guidance cutoff is odd for a clean overclock. I'm not sure how practical it is, but it'd be pretty good when trying to pick off multiple targets quickly. When the player lets go of the left mouse button, it'll stop guiding the missiles so they'll just go on their own from whatever direction they were facing. I wasn't very good with this, so if you know what it's used for, let me know. Plasma Burster Missiles is a pretty wild time. Rockets gain the ability to travel through enemies multiple times as they're made of plasma now, and they're also easier to maneuver, with some damage trade-offs to go with it. Look at this Mactera get absolutely annihilated by this overclock. Use this if you want to control a swarm of plasma bees, uh, it's a fun time. The Hurricane is a powerful and entertaining addition to Gunner's arsenal. It may take some getting used to, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it and it lived up to my expectations. I give the Hurricane a 5 out of 5. Last on the list is Driller's Corrosive Sludge Pump, a nightmare contraption that fires blobs of toxic goop, coating the terrain in hazardous waste that melts bugs. And honestly, I think this is the first time I've like felt bad for killing these bugs. Like, the animation for melting these dudes is brutal. The sludge pump's unique feature is a charge shot mechanic. Fully charged projectiles shoot out fragments of goo on impact, coating a large area in deadly waste. And these charge shots are heavily customizable with overclocks. Sitting next to Driller's primaries, it feels right at home. It's great at slowing down and weakening hordes like the cryocannon, but it has a little bit of the bite of the flamethrower too. 
There's nothing quite like wielding a concrete mixer filled with boogers. Jokes aside, the sludge pump is impressive to me. I'm sure it was quite difficult to design and balance. It's a very non-traditional weapon. Even making this goop not annoying in multiplayer would be hard. Either way, it's here, and I think they did a great job. I play Driller the most out of the four classes, and I'm loving the sludge pump. The flamethrower and cryo cannon are very much just point and shoot. It's nice to have something that's different in both aiming and charge mechanic. On to overclocks, I really like Goo Bomber Special, an unstable that makes charge shots leave a trail of sludge just like everyone's favorite gooey friend. This comes at the cost of charge shots not exploding on impact, and that's a pretty tough trade. But hey, it's neat, and that's what counts in my book. Dispenser Compound is my personal favorite for my brief testing with these overclocks. It feels like this weapon's version of Carpet Bomber, creating more goop fragments on impact. Both of the clean overclocks are good options too. Hydrogen Ion Additive increases corrosive damage and slows bugs down more. I could see a lot of people picking this one. On the other hand, AG Mixer alters the goo projectiles to make them barely arc at all, letting you aim almost directly at any target around a cave and hit them. The corrosive sludge pump is very different to use than Driller's other primaries, and I think it does a great job avoiding the annoyances that would come with a weapon like this. Also, it's made by the maintenance staff on the space rig, which could mean this goop comes from a variety of pleasant substances around the rig. I give the corrosive sludge pump a 4 out of 5. And that's all of them. I thought we should celebrate this rare occasion of new weapons with an award ceremony that I have titled the Season 1 Weapon Award Ceremony. Uh, let's get the applause going, please. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Stop it. Stop, stop clapping. The Drac 25 Plasma Carbine wins. The Cool Looking Fellow Award. The Lock 1 Smart Rifle wins. The Gun That Looks Most Like a Nerf Gun Award. The Hurricane Guided Rocket System wins the Haha -ha Yes Funny Yeah Woo Award. And the Corrosive Sludge Pump wins the Poop Gun Award. Thank you for coming to the award ceremony. It was very brief, I know. But hey, you, you know, the tickets weren't that expensive. It's fine. Looking at all of these new primaries, it seems like the goal was to create something that is different for each class, but also make new mechanics that are fun and rewarding to master. And I think they achieved that, even if the plasma carbine isn't really my favorite thing in the world. The efforts Ghost Ship puts into variety are always outstanding. They really could have just added some pretty standard weapons, but instead we got a gun that has a connect on it and a sludge launcher. It's stylized, unique, and fun, just like the rest of DRG. And I'm left more excited for new secondaries when those are coming later down the line. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you again soon. Rock and Stone.